Hi there, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about pie chart. If you haven't been following my videos about Matplotlib, no problems. I'm going to be setting the ground, how to start. But again, if you want to have a look at my previous videos, it's going to help you a lot. So today we're going to be talking about pie charts. Well, yes, this is a pie and I'm really hungry right now. What we are trying to do is to make a pie chart which represents portion of a total. Think about a basket of fruits. Imagine you have 10 fruits, three of them are apples, seven of them are oranges. So you wanna make a pie chart that represents 30% apple and 70% oranges. Or you can think of in terms of a pizza. Again, I'm really hungry. That's why I'm looking at these photos. We are gonna be making these round proportional charts. I'm gonna go ahead and close these. And this is what a pie chart looks like. But you gotta be very careful not to put too much data onto a pie chart. For example, for this one, how much water do we use? 16.8% for shower, 26.7% for toilet, that's a lot, and so forth. But imagine, had I had 20 groups, would this be a good representation? Look at this pie chart. I'm not a really big fan of this pie chart because there is too much to digest. If you wanna follow along with me while I'm coding, feel free to go ahead and download the code and the data in the description below on my GitHub repository. Let's go ahead and make a new Jupyter Notebook, rename it to underscore pie charts. Like always from my plot as PLT. Let's make a blank canvas, PLT figure a big size of seven by seven plt dot plot plt dot show the three commands that i use for making a blank canvas well am i going to be making a plot because plot does a line plot no i'm not going to be making a line plot i'm going to be making a pie chart think of an example of my pet at home imagine i have three cats and two dogs. So I'll say pets equals three and two. Three for cats and two for dogs. All you need to do is to say, okay, plt pi, make a pie chart of my pets. Let's run this. Okay, I need to run this. And then the blue portion is for the cats and the orange portion is for the dogs because I have three cats and two dogs. This is the simplest form of making a pie chart. Let's make a title for it my awesome pets. But the problem with this pie chart is that there, there is no labels. I don't really know which one is cats, which one is dogs. So to add labels to this data, you wanna make a new variable called labels and you can say cats because we first talked about cats. So three represents cats. And for the pie chart, there is a variable you can set which is labels. And you can see that the blue ones are cats and the orange ones are dogs. But I don't only have cats and dogs. Um, I have five birds. So you add the number, you need to add the label. I have one um, rabbit. Now you can see that the proportion of the total changes based on the number of pets that I'm adding. So you don't really need to calculate those proportions. The pie plot does it itself. However, if you wanted to have control over the colors, you can make another variable and call it colors, make a list, blue for dogs, yellow for birds, green for rabbit. And I need to set colors to colors variable. So you can see that the, the colors have changed. The birds are yellow because I have a lot of birds. I have five of them and they have the biggest proportion of the pie chart. I would like to have a wedge color around these pies. And the way I do that is using the variable wedge props. Wedge props equals, you need to pass in a dictionary and say for edge color black. And you can see that there is this black rim along all those sections. So we don't normally have to make our data to make a pie chart. We sometimes have to read a CSV or do some analysis and then make a pie chart of our analysis. A big mistake that sometimes we do is cramming so much information and too many classes into a pie chart. Pie charts are really good for five things, six things, seven things, but you don't wanna put 30 different categories or 30 different pets in my example, because this is gonna look really, really busy. And I'm gonna show you why. Let's go ahead and import pandas because I wanna read this data.csv, pandas as pd. If you haven't seen my pandas tutorial, click on the link up the top right, and that will take you to a really quick way of learning pandas. And I'm gonna say data equals pd read underscore csv, data.csv. And if I view the data head, which shows me 
the top five rows of the data. I don't really want to see this unnamed equals zero. So I all I need to do is index call equals zero. If I do that, I will not see that um, you know index column coming as a column. All the data. You can see that there are um, 28 languages because it starts from counting from zero. So you've got 28 languages and the number of people who have responded that they use this. I'm gonna try and make a pie chart for this one and then I will want your ideas. Why do you think this is a bad pie chart? Before we had our labels as pets. So pet names, cats and dogs and birds and that. Now our labels are going to be programming languages. Labels equals data language. Does that work? Yes. If I print the labels, these are the labels. The values, let's call it values, will be data frequency. Let's make a figure of big size equals, you can make any size you want. I'm just making um, seven because it looks nice on my screen. I'm gonna make a pie chart of values. The labels will be and Let's go ahead and say plt.show. Very simple. I haven't added any title. I haven't done anything. I just want to show you how it looks. This looks very, very busy to me. I can't even read these labels because they are printing on top of each other. And as I said, you want to use pie charts for something like this because it's easy to visualize. This is not a really good idea. For this one, I would definitely go with a bar chart. What is a good thing to do now? Probably I should be looking at the top seven. Let's look at the data. It is in variable order. So we have 55,000, 35,000, 59,000. So there is no order in this one. So what I will say, I'll be like sort values based on frequency. And I can see that that goes from low to high. I want to, I want it in the reverse order. I want it from high to low. So I'll say ascending equals false. Now it is in descending order. So the JavaScript, which is the top one, 59,000 is at the top. And I want to take the top seven. Um, so let's write this onto the data. So I'm updating the data. I will need to move my labels after the data because I'm updating the data here. The values need to be updated. Values, labels, and give me values from zero to seven and give me labels from zero seven. And this is a much better view. I, I understand that I'm not including all the data, but including all the data didn't really make sense because I couldn't see the data. Now, if I want to make this nicer, I'll just say um, wedge props equals a dictionary of edge. And you can set that to, oops, that has to be outside. You can set it to green. And you can see that there is this green color that is cutting the edges. I don't really like green. Let's make it white, adding a title, adding legend. Please do that because your graph, your chart represents your ability as a data scientist. The thing that this graph is really lacking is a title. Popularity of programming languages. So if I run that, I can see that. Maybe I'll just add it a bigger font size. I want a font size of 16. Consider this, you are going to be talking to your manager. You want to tell them why Python is a really good programming language and you want to put some emphasis on Python. You might have seen that you can do pie chart explode. I'll show you images of that. You can make one of these sli slices to explode, to come outside because you want to add emphasis. I'm going to show you how to do that. To start with exploding slices out of the bigger pie chart, remember this, if you want a slice of, for example, SQL to move outside a bit, you need to give it a number bigger than zero. If you don't want to move it, keep it at zero. Let's go ahead and first look at the labels that we are plotting. We are, we are plotting labels from zero to seven. You remember that? Let's print that, okay? And I'm gonna make a variable called explode. It's gonna be a list of numbers that I'm gonna say, if it is zero, just keep it where it is. If it is bigger than zero, move it outside. And you remember that I wanna move Python. So first one is JavaScript. I don't wanna move it, zero. Second one, HTML. I'm not gonna move it, zero. SQL. Don't want to move it. Zero. Python, I definitely want to move it. So let's give it 0.2 and then zero for Java, zero for Bash, and zero for C Sharp. Let's run this. All I need to do is to set the parameter explode in the Py module to explode. You can see that Python has been exploded 
from the pie chart because I want to show what is the share of Python, how important it is. If I were to move JavaScript also outside, but smaller than Python, I will do this and I will run it again. And now Java is also exploded. So you can change these numbers in order to move those slices. I don't want JavaScript to stick out. And so I'm just gonna go back and set it to zero. And I want JavaScript to be back. I only wanna emphasize on Python. So this point two essentially means that I am moving the slice for Python 20% of the radius of the bigger pie chart outside. So this gap from this here to there should be 20% of the radius of the pie chart. Am I happy with that? Yeah, I guess so. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of different parameters that's more around aesthetics. It just makes your pie chart more representable, more interpretable, and makes it easy for you to show what you wanna show. So let me just go ahead and move wedge props to a new line because I wanna write the new code in this um, line, in the top line. One thing you can do is just to add shadow to your um, pie chart. It, it will make it a bit more representable and you can see that there are shadows along the edges of the pie chart along this slice as well but I would also like this Python to rotate to somewhere up the top or to the right because I want to see that bigger and bolder the way you can do that is to use a very a parameter called start angle and what it does it just arbitrarily starts plotting from a specific angle if I run that uh, I gotta play with it to get Python a bit here, but you can see that now I rotated Python from here to there. So let's just make it 180. That's cool. Python is up there and I can see it more and I can, it is more represented now. One more thing that will really help is to show percentages on each slice. Now I can see visually which slice is bigger, but I'm not really sure if JavaScript is bigger than HTML or vice versa or SQL. So what I can do, I can actually add percentage of the pie chart represented by each language. This is a bit of a tricky one and every time I need to do it, I need to look it up on the documentation. So you need to use auto PCT parameter and the format is a bit of an odd one. So don't worry if you don't remember, you can always look it up. You gotta say percent sign 1.1 F percent sign percent sign and put a comma there, run that and now I can see the percentages of each programming language on the pie chart. I wanted to mention a couple of important things about pie charts. They're really useful to show proportional data. You wanna show how much of one thing is dedicated to one thing and how much of that is dedicated to another thing. So really good at showing proportionality. However, point two is that do not use it for many classes. Pie charts are really useful and easy to understand when they have five categories, six categories, max seven categories, depending on what you're showing. If you wanna go, if you wanna show more categories and more data, make sure you convert to bar charts. I have a video on that one. Um, make a horizontal bar chart, make a vertical bar chart, depending on the data, and do not really look at using pie charts for many 